happy to have you here during Halloween, one of our favorite times of the year, where we can talk about spooky books, ghost stories, vampires, witches, werewolves, and everything in between. It's one of our favorite times of year, uh, and that's true for most of our staff. So we have a lot of recommendations, whether you like nonfiction or novels, or if you're looking for kids' books, or just something fun and not necessarily scary. Some of the, the best parts of it is that it's based in history, the historical haunted Vermont, haunted inns and ghostly getaways of Vermont, and the history of vampires in New England. Rumored to be a few vampires right here in Woodstock. You'll have to read more about it. There will be some contemporary novels and also some picture books and middle grade novels for kids. Some of the classics. There's a lot of staff picks that fit for Halloween, so we have a lot of things to share with you. Historically speaking, New England is uh, haunted by tales of witches, vampires, uh, right here in Woodstock even. The history of vampires in New England. Woodstock is mentioned two times in here. Another tie to Woodstock is Ghost Story by Peter Straub. They filmed a movie, the movie version of it here, back in 1981, featuring Fred Astaire and Melvin Douglas. Was it a coincidence that this was the final movie that they acted in? Salem's Lot, one of my favorite. Small town New England, vampire pandemic. Stray tale of uh, homecoming and mysterious strangers who live in big old houses. A little bit of a boy cries wolf story and at first nobody wants to believe it. Timeless classic, check it out. So I'm a big fan of the horror movies and of uh, little tacky paperbacks. Um, these two cover um, some of my favorites. Uh, paperbacks from Hell covers the uh, uh, cheap paperbacks you could find at drugstores for, uh, for three bucks. Um, a lot of the, the best artwork, craziest titles that you're going to see. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a walk through history and how it could influence uh, today's paperbacks. So, Horror Cinema covers the early days of filmmaking. Uh, this will go from the silent film to up until about the 2000s. Um, everything in between. All full color uh, movie posters and a quick synopsis of the movie. So I am a bit of a wuss when it comes to scary books and scary movies, um, much to my, to my husband's chagrin. Uh, but as long as I can laugh, uh, I, I really enjoy a good campy horror thing during the, holidays, the, the Halloween holiday season. Um, but I wanted to share <laughs> when I was a kid, I really could not handle scary things. And, um, so the first scary book that I ever read was actually Goosebumps, the werewolf of fever swamp. Um, it had a very different cover when I read it, but I read it out of peer pressure. Uh, and I hated every second of it. <laughs> I was terrified. I didn't sleep for like three nights. Um, so yeah, I really not very good at the scary things, but Goosebumps are still around, and much like Harry Potter ended up doing too, you know, they they really helped a lot of kids get into reading, um, kids who wouldn't have otherwise read, so, you know, scary stories definitely can get some kids into reading. Um, so on that note, I have a few recommendations of recent scary books for kids that I think people would really enjoy. If you have been in the store at all in the last five years, and I've recommended a book to you, I've probably recommended Catherine Arden. Um, she wrote the adult series, the Winter Night Trilogy, which starts with the Bear and the Nightingale. And it's like a Russian folklore fantasy series. Um, but she also writes for kids. And for kids, she writes scary stuff. Um, and she has now completed her quartet, um, and I forget what the name of the overall, ah, it's the Small Spaces Quartet, because the first book is called Small Spaces, um, but these are a group of three kids who become friends, um, and they live in Vermont, and every book is set in a different season, and the first one is set in fall, and there's a field trip that happens, 
to a farm with a corn maze. And of course, as soon as dusk comes and the, and the fog rolls in, uh, things get a little creepy and dark and the, the villain makes himself known. Um, and I actually, I had to stop reading this when it got dark outside. <laughs> Nothing really terrible happens in it, but the way that she writes is just so good. Um, they're perfectly appropriate for, you know, any middle, middle grade reader, um, nine, 10, 12, you know, right in that area. Um, but they're really fun and especially because they start in the fall. Uh, but then you've got the fall, you have Dead Voices, which is in the wintertime at a haunted ski chalet. Um, there's Dark Waters, which is set on Lake Champlain in the spring. And then the summer one takes place at the fair and I cannot look at this cover, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Empty Smiles just came out recently. So yeah, now it's, now it's complete. So my other recommendation for middle grade readers is a new one from the author Colin Malloy. The stars did Wander Darkling. Um, and this one is definitely like a love letter to campy B horror films, but written for a 10 year old. Uh, when I got the first version of this book uh, from the publisher to read for review, there was a letter from the author in it who basically admitted that when he was 10, he wanted to borrow every single Stephen King book from the library and the librarians wouldn't let him. Uh, <laughs> so he did it in secret. Um, and so he really wanted to write a book that was for all those 10 year old kids that really wanted to read Stephen King. Um, but this is definitely more appropriate. Um, and in my mind, any kid's book that references the movie Chud uh, is, is pretty fun. Um, so this would definitely be fun for, uh, adults and kids, especially like if you as the adult are a movie buff and there are things that you want to share with your kid, this would be really fun to have good references and things, but it's set in the Pacific Northwest. Um, they're trying to develop this big fancy hotel and they dig somewhere where they shouldn't have, and they unleash a thing, um, that tries to take over the town. So very creepy, very atmospheric, very fun for, for this time of year. Now for the youngest of readers and for story times, I have a number of uh, picture book recommendations that are good for this time of year. Um, the first is a newer book. It came out last year by Oliver Jeffers called There's a Ghost in This House. So this book has some really cool paper special effects. Um, it's all about a house that this, this family lives in um, that's totally not haunted, but it is. Um, and as you're going through, there are these really cool pages that like show you the house. Um, and then you flip the very careful vellum page and a little ghost appears. Um, so only the readers can see the ghosts. The little girl in the house cannot. Um, and it's just really fun. Like, I love special effects with paper. Um, and this, this book is full of them. And it's a really sweet story. And Oliver Jeffers' illustrations are always really great. Uh, so this is just a lovely Halloween book about ghosts. Next we have um, Ghost in Bones by Elise Dinej, who's a local author. And we have all of her titles here at the shop, uh, but this one is particularly cute and very seasonal. She also has a book um, about witches and their coven at the playground, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, so we wanted to show off Elise's new, Elise's new one. And for some funny seasonal books uh, for, for the little ones, we have two books by Flavia Drago, uh, Gustavo, The Shy Ghost, and Layla, The Perfect Witch. Um, both of these are Halloween adjacent. You know, we've got ghosts and witches. Um, and Gustavo definitely has a lot of references to Day of the Dead. Um, but they are about more than that. Gustavo is a ghost who's shy and, and learning how that's okay. Um, and then Layla is a little witch who's focused on being perfect. And she learns that maybe that's, you know, 
not the best way to be. And it's okay to not be perfect all the time. Um, so they're both really fun story time books that have nice lessons and they're definitely good seasonal treats too. For my last picture book recommendation, I have a new one from um, Caldecott honoree Molly Idol. It's called Witch Hazel. And this one is a little more serious, but it's got a wonderful message about the power of stories. Um, little Hilda spends time with her grandmother, Hazel, um, and they bond over Hazel's stories. And eventually, when Hazel is no longer around, um, Hilda can remember her through all of the stories that, she, they, that they have shared. Um, and it'll definitely bring tears to your eyes, but it's got wonderful illustrations and a really sweet message. Um, and anything that talks about the power of stories, I think, is is worthwhile for sure. So that's little, it's Witch Hazel by Molly Idol. So I mentioned earlier that I'm a real wuss when it comes to scary stories. So all of my seasonal picks um, are definitely ones that have an element of humor or they're just magical. Um, so first of all, I want to say that uh, there are a lot of witchy rom-coms out there. So if you want to laugh, and if you want a little bit of a romance, um, Lana Harper is fantastic. She was my, my gateway to the witchy rom-com. Um, and Payback's the Witch was, was the first one that I read. She now has a second one out as well, but there are a ton of these available. Um, so if you like witchy or magic and you just want something fun with like a guaranteed happy ending, reach for a rom-com. Um, they're kind of my new favorite thing. So because <laughs> sometimes you just need to know it's going to end well. Next, I have a couple of books by Grady Hendrix. Uh, Christian also is going to recommend one of his nonfiction titles. Um, but what I love about Grady is his books are basically like watching a campy B horror film, um, just in, in book form. So first we have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, uh, which is an homage to book clubs and the South. Um, it's just, it's, it's very funny these women are smart. Um, they really love their book club. It is quite the book club. Um, and then a, a mysterious stranger moves in down the street. Uh, and it turns out that he might truly be a vampire. Not sure. Um, but the book club is going to investigate and find out. So <laughs> um, a note, Grady Hendrix's stuff does get a little gory. Uh, you can always skip ahead over the paragraph if you need to. Um, his second book is great for, the second book of his that I'm recommending is great for slasher film buffs. Um, the Final Girl Support Group. I have watched some slashers, not all of them, so I know a lot of this went over my head, but it was still very fun. Uh, all of the final girls from like, I want to say five or seven different slashers um, that definitely reference real movies that you've seen. Um, all are in a support group together. They all go to group therapy because they've been through a lot and they need to figure out how to deal with it. Uh, and then one by one, they start to disappear. Um, so final girls trying to kick butt again, um, but in, in book form this time, uh, it was very, very fun. Finally, um, I have a new novel from a Vermont author. It's actually her first novel. She's a poet as well. Um, Jenna Rose Nethercott, Thistlefoot. Um, and if you can see the awesome illustrations on the cover of this book, you can probably guess uh, that is a house on chicken legs, which means this is a Baba Yaga story. Um, and she is one of the witches from Russian folklore. Um, who lives in the chicken leg house. And there are lots and lots of stories about her out here. Um, but I love this one because it's contemporary. These, this brother and sister inherit the chicken leg house. Um, and they, they have to figure out kind of what to do with it. 
Um, the sister really wants to keep it. The brother says he's willing to give it to her if they travel in it first and perform a puppet show. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty magical. A lot of this is set in Vermont in the beginning. Um, and it definitely, it starts at this time of year. So it's, it's pretty perfect. Um, there's a lot of history in this one too. They do talk about, um, the history of the house and, there's a lot of reference to um, the pogroms that were happening in Eastern Europe, um, because in this story, that's that's part of the root of the chicken leg house. Um, so, historical fiction, Vermont centered and and um, Vermont setting, um, yeah, it's just a really fantastic novel. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and I've been a bookseller here at the Yankee Bookshop for about four years and here to talk about a few of my favorite spooky reads that I've really come to love over the years. I'm going to start with one of my absolute favorite spooky reads from this year which was What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher and this one it's short, but so, 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 so good. It is not often that I buy and read a book in a single day, but I did with this one. Uh, this one is a retelling or reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher, which, confession, I actually have not read before this, but will definitely be reading after this. So if you read Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia, you are going to love this one. Um, not to spoil it too much, but let's just say it involves mushrooms. And again, super short, really gets under your skin in the absolute best way possible. And if you are a fan of packaging, the hardcover itself, is amazing and it has some really really fantastic end paper cover uh, art as well and really really fits with the the spooky halloween vibes so the next book i'm going to talk about is one that came out a few years ago um but has really really stuck with me ever since i've read it and that is a head full of ghosts by paul tremblay and this one reads a lot like a horror movie and you're following the uh, a family the barretts as their 14 year old daughter is showing signs of schizophrenia but later turns into possible possession and you have a film crew that's following the family and documenting these, this entire case of possession. However, it quickly has a twist right at the end that will give you whiplash that will stay with you for days after reading this one. And bonus is that this is also a New England author, takes place in Massachusetts. So if you're really feeling the autumnal New England Halloween vibes, this one's definitely going to be it for you. And especially if you're one who enjoys horror movie more than reading horror movies, this will be a perfect fit for you. The last book I have here is actually a graphic novel by Emily Carroll and it's called Through the Woods and this is probably one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. The artwork it's absolutely gorgeous and, and it's very dark and every story is connected through probably what's the spookiest thing about this time of year is the woods. It's dark, it's mysterious, and you don't know what's looking, lurking behind those trees. And there's just such a collection of stories in here that she's done a wonderful job with, um, including a different take on an evil stepmother, but also when things aren't quite as they seem to be. So if you are someone who's maybe a little bit on the more visual side, but
but still wants to be spooky, this is a great option for you as well. So it is not often that I buy and read a book in a single day, but I did with this one. And then I brought it back to the store and made pretty much the rest of our staff read it as well. And this has easily become a staff favorite for all of us. Two thumbs yes. up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Jenna. I started working here around like two years ago. And the first book that I read since starting was this one, The Whisper Man by Alex North. This is really the first book that gave me chills. Um, before this one, I hadn't read anything scary. I kind of steered clear of that um, prior to working here. But this is a crime procedural thriller that I um, really enjoyed and I recommend it to pretty much anyone who comes in here looking for like a horror or like spooky thriller. Um, this explores themes of like loss, um, of like a mother and wife and a struggling relationship between a father and son while also um, providing lots of twists and turns and um, a cliffhanger at the end of every chapter. So this one I just blew right through and I love to recommend this to anyone who wants a quick thriller, one they just can't put down. My next recommendation is a classic, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. This is the first and actually only Stephen King I've read so far because everyone told me it was the scariest. Um, so I thought I would just jump right in with that and it definitely was. It left me feeling very eerie and gave me a very overwhelming sense of dread after finishing it. This book follows a family's descent into madness after moving to a new small town in Maine. It really just gets under your skin. And I, you know, I can't recommend it enough. This is the most recent book that I have read. This was a really great Halloween read. It's what I call a women's werewolf story. Um, it's not just spooky, it's romantic, it's a little funny, it explores interpersonal relationships with family and friends, um, while also exploring the inconvenient werewolf transformation each month. Um, this book is different from what I normally read. I don't usually do romances, but this had a lot of really like fun elements to it while also kind of like exploring like body horror and going into like intense details of the werewolf transformation. I highly recommend this one. It's Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. Hi, my name is Kylie. Um, the first book I'm going to talk about is called Beatrice Likes the Dark. It is a new children's book that just came out this year. Um, it has absolutely enchanting illustrations. Um, it's a beautiful story about two sisters who appear to be complete opposites and how they are able to come together and connect and learn to appreciate what the other one likes. Funicula is a wonderful middle grade story for children that was one of my favorites growing up as a kid. Um, the Monroe family dog and cat, uh, Harold and Chester, believe that the new family pet, a little rabbit, could possibly be a vampire. His name is Bonicula and they are suspicious because all of the vegetables that he eats don't disappear but they turn white. This story is all about how they try to figure out their new rabbit companion and whether or not he is in fact a vampire. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark was a formative part of my childhood. I believe I, it was featured at every middle school sleepover I ever went to. I found the stories to be completely terrifying and it was not easy to sleep afterwards but I still have amazing memories of sitting with my friends and going through them. 
I highly recommend this particular copy because it has the original illustrations um, from when I was a kid and they are equally as terrifying as the stories that are contained within the book. <laughs> um, so if you like to get a little bit of a scare, I definitely recommend this. Thanks so much for joining us and please come visit us at the bookshop for all of these books and many more. Stay tuned for more book reviews from Woodstock Community Television. We'll see you soon.